Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. We are back here with Winslow BMW in this beautiful location with the nice backdrop of the mountains over there. But this that you have right here in front of me is the new 2024 BMW X5. I wanted to take a look at this a bit in a closer detail in the front side and rear and kind of analyze what's different with the new X5 with the facelift and what's actually changed from the previous generation. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Have a look at the design, the interior, and then we're going to take it for a drive. Starting with the front end design of this BMW, I'm glad that they didn't went with the, you know, fully vertical grills like we have on the 4 Series now and the iX as well. I just think it looks better when we have them in this position like we have right here. You can see that we have a brand new front lower part of the X5 with a facelift with these two big air intake slots and this is actually functional with active shutters down here and you also have active shutters in this grill. This is the shadow line package but what I would like to do in the front end here is also have this beautiful grill, I want to have this be blacked out as well, which you can get on the new X5. Now, looking at these new headlights, I kind of like them as they are right here. They're a little bit more, I would say, static with these two lines for the indicators. Then you have the two big LED headlamps in between those two, and you have the housing inside also being blacked out. I think it looks really good, and I also like that the line here now emphasizes this intake that we have on the side. So we have a nice champ going around the lower part of the front end and then continues up here and housing this functional air vent. I'm not so sure about this black piece that we have here. I kind of want to have this being body colored and not have this angle of the front end design. But overall, I think it's a really nice update for the front end design of the new X5. Another detail with these headlights that I really think they did a good job on is that they didn't go with the split headlight design that we have in the new X7, for example. We have it in the XM or and the new 7 series of course we have the daytime rolling us up here and then you have the headlight unit itself being part of the bumper i just think this looks a little bit more classy maybe a little more um, timeless and elegant compared to that treatment but i do understand why they do it because if you have the headlight in the bumper you're actually going to have a lot more freedom to create whatever you want on the top part of the daytime running lights let's talk about the side view for a second there are a couple of things i want to mention here when it comes to the side view first of all i love this shoulder line on the x5 they kept that intact to see it goes up through the uh, door handles on the rear passengers and it has this dip to it and continues below the front door handles and then into the front bumper. One detail though that I would li like to change on the side view of the X5 is this right here. This is not a functional vent. I feel like this is out of place. It just doesn't feel like it belongs here. And there's also this line here that goes right here. I kind of want to have, if we're going to have something like this, I want it to follow this line and then sit in this position up here with this line housing it instead of having it be as a separated graphic unit right here. Again, this being the M Sport package, you get the M branded brakes, you get the M branded wheels. These are the 20 inch wheels. Personally, I would go for them maybe a little bit less comfortable. They're probably just as comfortable as these, but I would go with the 22 inch wheels for this. And I actually like them in black on the X5 with this Brooklyn gray color. I think black wheels on this, the 22s M wheels, I think they would look really good. Now this being the shadow line package, you have the black gloss trim going around the windows with sort of a Hoffmeister kink intact here. It has a little bit of a bend to it going up here, but still, just have a look at this shoulder line from that angle that you're looking at now. I think it's just a fantastic looking shoulder. And then you have the same kind of blacked out roof rails right here. The same material as we have around the greenhouse. And then this piece down here as well. Another detail of BMW design that kind of sets or creates a nice base for the lower part. Because it's protruding a little bit from the body of the car. And adds a nice solid base. It plants the car on the ground. Coming around to the rear end of the new X5. Okay, the first thing you notice here from the 2023 model with the facelift are these new taillights. You can see that they are almost pulsating when you have the indicator on. I think it looks really cool. The old one had the LEDs inside going along the outline of the, the housing for the, for the taillights. This is the same housing, but they now sit in a more 3D way. So these actually stick out from the bodywork. And I think it looks cool, even though maybe it looks a little bit more static, just like we have in the front end of the new headlights. But it overall, it suits the new graphics all, all around this car. This though, this is a detail that I would either 
remove or maybe make black because if you have the shadow line package on the X5 I don't want to have any chrome pieces at all on the car so this is one detail that I would probably make black to have it be in line with the rest of the car. What I love about the overall design and line flow that we have in the rear is that we have a lot of horizontal line going across the entire rear end and this will emphasize the width and also again plant the car nicely on the ground. Another thing that I would like to change in the back though is this. I don't want to have a wiper centered mounted right here on the glass. I want to have this hidden underneath the, uh, the top the roof spoiler up here. It would look so much cleaner if we just could remove this. Moving down to the bumper here, we have a sort of stylized diffuser down here. And this is a diffuser diaper because you can see this body color is not connected with the rest of the body. And it's separated completely by this black trim. And then you have the chrome tips on the tailpipes. Again, you can go with the extended shadow line package, which is something that I would do that would black out the front grill and will also get the tips back here in not in chrome but also blacked out. One cool function about this rear end is that you can open this in a split way. So if we click this button you see that the top is gonna open but then you have this big piece that you need to load stuff above but if you click a button in here it actually folds down and then you have a nice flat surface and a lot less height to load up your heavy stuff in and then if you want to close everything together you don't have to close it separately all you have to do is just hit this button up here and it will automatically close first the lower part and then the top part. Welcome to the interior of the brand new 2024 BMW X5. I love these lights that we have here. I just noticed this. It says X5 kind of carved out from this trim piece. Very nice. Overall, the first thing I noticed when I come in here is just how chiseled and sharp this interior feels. With all these angles, you have this trim up there in the corner looking really nice. Same kind of trim here with some different textures, different material choices and different smells in here. They kind of place with your senses. That's what I want to see in a modern interior. This doesn't feel as clinical as a lot of other new car models uh, today, but we still have this big curved screen which I'm sort of getting used to by now with a 14.9 infotainment screen right here. You have a 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster right behind the steering wheel and have a look at this little detail for the gear lever. It's almost like a crystal now so you don't have anything any big stick to choose your gear. All you do is just push this back and forth and that's how you select the gear these days. Connected to of course the latest iDrive system with this big dial which I'm not sure if I would use the dial or if I was using just the touch screen like this. I think it's good that we have both options so we have some sort of tactile buttons in this car. We don't have any buttons for the climate control, tactile buttons. Everything is controlled by the infotainment screen and you know what I think about that. The key features in a car I always want to have them be dials with some sort of texture so when I'm out driving I can just feel my way to what it is I want to change instead of having to go into a screen and press exactly the right place on the screen which could be a little tricky if we're going over a bumpy road. The air vents in here are really interesting as well. They, they, you have this little thing, this little I don't know what to call it, knob where you uh, turn the air on and off and then you angle the air by just moving these knobs. Very unique feature and I kind of like it to be honest. You have the air slots right above them and beneath and they feel heavy. They, f they feel like they have a nice quality to them similar to what we have here on the sides as well. In the middle here you have, let's see what we have under here. We have two cup holders. You have uh, wireless charging of course, a USB port right here by the cup holders and a 12 volt outlet. In the middle stack here you have your buttons for your driving modes. You have Sport Comfort, Echo Pro, Hill Descent and all everything for the gearbox as well. And here you have some quick buttons for the infotainment screen. So you have Media, Home, Map, Nav, Tell, Back and Options. So you have at least a couple of tactile buttons here that will get you to where you want to go in the infotainment screen a little bit quicker than just using the screen itself. Right in front of me we have a nice head-up display, it's super crisp and clear and we have this separated split armrest with a lot of storage down here with another USB-C port in there as well. I really like this finish of this sort of wood grain material that we have on the dash. Maybe not to have it in gloss, I would probably want to have it in a, a bit of a matte color so it doesn't reflect too much in the surface. And this in combination with this almost uh, carbon fiber looking style of this trim that we have going in the 
center with the ambient lighting is just beautiful touch. One detail still that I'm not a fan of when it comes to BMW interiors is this. This hardware is still here in the 2024 uh, X5. I don't want to see mounting hardware like this visible in the car. This is something that I think BMW could have implemented better in the dash and have the screen itself be better integrated in the overall layout of the design. Up top in this specific X5 we have a massive panoramic roof that looks huge and goes all the way to the backrests of the, of the passenger seats. Not something that I would particularly option for myself, but it's still a cool thing to have, specifically on a sunny day and once got more light in here. I like the dark interior colors of this specific X5. These seats are absolutely gorgeous and super comfortable. Of course, they're electronically adjustable on both the passenger and the driver. And there's actually vegan leather. It feels just like leather. It's called Sensafin by BMW when they put this leather in. Looks really nice and crisp. I love the cross stitching that we have here and I actually like it in black with the black stitching as well. I'm just a fan of toned down interiors in general and I think this does that job very well. The only knob that you have in here is pretty funny. The only knob that's available for you is first of all the infotainment but except for this is the volume knob. So if you want to change the volume real quick you can either do the gesture like this or here we go. <laughs> this this works too. I mean, if you're driving, pretty easy way to turn up and down the volume. But you can also, of course, use this single tiny little knob that's down here for the volume. So what do we have under the hood of this X5 XDrive 40i? We're talking an inline six turbocharged, 375 horsepower, 398 pound-feet of torque. And let's fire it up and let's hear what this sounds like. Oh, it feels good to be inside. The wind is just a brutal today here in Colorado Springs. So let's take the X5 X Drive 40 for a drive. You have an inline six three liter turbocharged engine up front, uh, engine up front, 375 horsepower, 398 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 in this thing. Listen to this, four and a half seconds. And I mean, think about that. 10 years ago, if you said that it, an SUV, an entry level, this is essentially an entry level X5 SUV, did 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds, it's just unheard of. Top speed is around 130 miles per hour and it's so comfortable. Right now I have it in sport, that's the only, only settings you can have it in, in my opinion. So let's see what it does. Oh yeah definitely got some pull and it's so cool that this is the entry level x5 these days i would definitely get the uh, uh i think the x5 only comes with four wheel drive by the way but uh, the x drive is definitely something i would go with doesn't matter if i'm buying an x5 or a three series five series here in colorado i would prefer to have the x drive all wheel drive like we have of course in this x5 we have a head-up display right there which looks pretty crisp if i switch between the comfort and the echo pro settings echo pro is like a very sleepy setting that i'm flooring it right now not a lot happening so let's go back into sport because that's the, of course the most fun mode to be in so what i think about this design overall the, the the facelift that bmw did as i said i'm glad they didn't go with the vertical grills like we have in the ix the a lot of a lot of bmws these days the four series I also like that the slots in the grill are, are vertical and the new M2 has them horizontal, which kind of looks good on the M2, but I think for this type of grill that we have here, this design, I want to have them be uh, uh, vertical like they are here. I think overall it, it's still a very good looking X5. The changes they made are not very substantial, but I think it kind of brings it up in line with the rest of the lineup with a little bit more static looking front and rear taillights and a couple of other small tweaks to the design. Oh yeah, it feels fantastic. I love the cornering of this thing as well. It doesn't feel like an SUV. That's one thing BMW, you can, you can argue as much as you want about the BMW design language, but what the one thing they do very well, no matter if you're in a Z4, a 3 Series, or XM or X5, they do know how to make great handling cars, and this is no exception. It's 
sounds good too. I'm pretty sure some audio is pumped out into the cabin, but as I said, when I drove the M2, I, I kind of don't mind it anymore to have some audio coming in to the interior. It just adds a little bit of that drama that you want as a driver of a performance car. You do what you have to do. Uh, the option is to either have them be super quiet or you can pump some artificial audio into the cabin, which honestly I don't mind anymore. Seating position in here, it's fantastic. It's, again, every single new car you drive these days are so comfortable, most of them at least. This as well, this is one of these um, cars that you can just go in and you can drive forever. These seats, I can't test them for hours, but as I'm sitting in the road right now, they feel super nice. Just enough bolstering on the sides, because as I said, this car still, even though it is an SUV, it still handles really well. So you need some seats that kind of hug you, and I think this does that, these seats does that really well. Huge thanks again to Winslow BMW for letting me review this car. I'm gonna link their full inventory down in the description so you can go and check that out. And thank you for watching, I really appreciate you. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.